As he took office on Tuesday, Rishi Sunak turned to the Conservatives' election manifesto of 2019. I will deliver on its promise, building an economy that embraces the opportunities of Brexit. Mr Sunak wants to build the economy, but there's no shortage of people who say that Brexit isn't helping to do that. Brexit is and was and will be a total disaster. Brexit is doing the economy real damage. Brexit as negotiated is frankly a disaster. Rishi Sunak wouldn't agree that Brexit's a disaster and however it's described, based on available evidence, this is what we know about Brexit and the economy. In 2020, then Prime Minister Boris Johnson agreed a trade deal with the EU in which the UK left the single market and the customs union. Mr Johnson saw it as a deal which will, if anything, allow our companies and our exporters to do even more business with our European friends. That's not happened yet. This is the non-partisan Institute for Fiscal Studies. We've lost a large fraction of our trade uh, with the European Union, including with high value professional, uh, professional services trade. That's making us poorer. Or there's the UK's trade as a whole. The Office for Budget Responsibility is the official body that provides independent economic analysis. It's concluded there's been a 15% reduction in trade intensity as a result of Brexit. It also released this data. The red line shows UK exports. Unlike other advanced economies, the UK's exports haven't bounced back after COVID. The OBR links this to Brexit. Time, now, Rishi Sunak's a long-time supporter of Brexit, as this campaign video released in the summer was keen to emphasise. So there you have it, Rishi Sunak, a real Brexiteer from day one. And months earlier, when still Chancellor, Mr Sunak was asked about the drop-in trade. It was always inevitable that if you change the exact nature of your trading relationship with the EU that was going to have an impact on trade flows. This week, in a different way, this point was acknowledged by the man who negotiated Brexit for the UK, Lord Frost. I've always said leaving the customs union and the single market has a cost. Not every Brexiteer has been willing to, to say that, but I've always said it. I don't think it's as big as many people say. Now, Lord Frost and many Brexiteers would say that Brexit is about much more than the economy. It was about sovereignty about taking back control. But the economy was part of it. This is Michael Gove in 2016. The truth is that if we vote to leave, we'll be in an economically stronger position. That also hasn't happened yet. Now, no doubt, resetting your trading relationship with the world takes time. There are already 71 new agreements with other countries, though most of them are direct copies of deals done when the UK was part of the EU. There are completely new deals with Japan, New Zealand and Australia. The Australia deal, for example, is estimated to increase the UK's GDP by 0.08% by 2035. Then there's India. The government said this week progress is being made, but there's no sign of a deal with the US. And if that's trade, next is business investment. It peaked in 2016, the year of the Brexit referendum. It's never returned to that level. Or there's the value of the pound. The strength of the dollar has lowered the value of currencies around the world. But the pound has fallen considerably against the dollar since 2016. And a weaker pound makes imported goods more expensive, which in turn has contributed to inflation. Put all of these factors together, and this is the Office for Budget Responsibility's conclusion. It forecasts that Brexit will reduce UK GDP by 4% over 15 years. And when faced with questions about the economy, ministers have pointed to international issues. These are global pressures, these inflationary pressures, these energy price pressures are affecting economies, developed and developing economies right across the globe. No doubt, the economic impacts of COVID and the war in Ukraine are considerable. The UK's economy has longer term issues too. Since the 1970s, growth has gradually slowed and since the global crash of 2008, productivity has stagnated. It's a complicated picture, but the OBR and many economists argue Brexit is part of it. For his part, Lord Frost says patience is required. 
I think the whole British politi- political system is going through a bit of a convulsion after Brexit. It's not surprising when you get these this sort of um, huge change. And I think it's got some way to play out yet. And as it plays out with a new prime minister in charge, Rishi Sunak has the chance to deliver the economic opportunities of Brexit that he's long promised. But based on available evidence, Brexit in its current form is one of the things constraining the growth of the UK's economy.